As you might imagine, placing all of our mapping configuration code in AutoMapper config like this is going to become problematic. This class will grow quite large as our app grows. We need a way to modularize our configuration and keep it organized. There are different schools of thought on how to do this. AutoMapper provides a profile class that you can derive from, but I prefer a different approach. I like to keep my mapping code close to the view model it relates to, as I've found that generally makes things easier to maintain. I also don't like having to tell AutoMapper to create a map. I'd rather it automatically create maps for me. In my approach, mapping code lives with the view model itself. That way you can see at a glance both the view model's definition as well as its AutoMapper configuration. To facilitate this, let's define a couple of interfaces over in our infrastructure folder. We'll create a new mapping folder and let's add an interface called imapfrom. This will be a generic marker interface, and our view models can use this to identify which domain type they should be populated or mapped from. We don't need to define any methods on it. Simply implementing the interface will be enough for our view models to opt in to the standard mapping behavior. But we may need to customize the mapping behavior too, so let's create another interface I have custom mappings. By implementing this interface, a view model can alter the AutoMapper configuration. Let's go ahead and alter our view models to use this infrastructure. First, we'll make our issue summary view model implement the iMapFrom interface. We'll do the same for our issue details view model and our edit issue form. Our assignment stats view model is a little more complicated though. We need to explicitly tell AutoMapper how to handle it, so we'll have to implement the I have custom mappings interface. And we'll stub out the required method using ReSharper. Then we'll add the equivalent code to the mapping that we had previously created over in our AutoMapper config class. With this in place, let's jump back over to our AutoMapper config class and let's remove the existing configuration. Instead of configuring everything in line here, we're going to use a combination of link and reflection to process our mapping configuration from our view models. First, we'll grab all the types that are defined in our web project. Next, we'll pass those off to a load standard mappings method. Our method will process each type in the project. For each type, it will examine the interfaces the type implements, and it will process any type that implements our generic imapfrom interface. Note that we skip abstract types and interfaces, so we don't explicitly create mappings for those types. We then build up pairs of source and destination types, which are then fed through to AutoMapper to create the mappings. This may make more sense if we look at a concrete example. At runtime, this code will find our issue details view model, see that it implements the IMAP from interface, and create a mapping from issue to our view model. Back in our config, let's process the custom mapping configurations by passing our types off to a load custom mappings method. Again, we'll process all types in our project, find any that implement the I have custom mappings interface and call their create mappings method so that they can apply whatever custom configuration they need to AutoMapper. Let's build and run our project again. We can see our mapping code in action here on the dashboard when we view an issue and when we edit an issue. This infrastructure we've built allows us to respect an important design principle. Our mapping code now adheres to the open closed principle. We can add new maps to the system by creating new view models without having to touch our AutoMapper config class. Let's move on to our next challenge.